Securitize Capital is a tokenization platform. Securitize itself creates tokens from A to Z. So they record the shares of a company on the blockchain, Ethereum, Algorand, Avalanche, one of those chains. They actually then, um, they, they had to get a bunch of licenses. So it's a transfer agent that can record securities. It's got an automatic trading system that can buy and sell security tokens once they're issued. And they have a broker dealer that can do primary issuance for any type of company, whether it's a Reg A plus type issue for someone like Exodus Wallet, or it's a private fund like a private equity fund or a hedge fund. So once they're tokenized, then they can have secondary market in a market that otherwise doesn't have secondary liquidity whatsoever. So this is uh, very interesting because people think that crypto is all tokens and all tokens are the same. And the original tokens that are Bitcoin, Ethereum, things like that, the layer one tokens, they are actually you know, used for you know, providing an incentive for people to keep a network up and running. So that you know, people who run nodes and run the computer systems that keep a, keep a network up, they have to be incentivized with some kind of payment. So if they get paid by tokens, then they have a way of getting paid to keep a network up. The other thing is, the, the other way to use a token is to pay for the transactions for the network because if you don't charge for it there could be way too many transactions and it'll get crowded mm -hmm. so the only way to regulate it is to charge for the transactions and then so the tokens are used for the payment for the network too yes. now once the network is up and running things can be recorded on it transactions can be recorded that's what a security token is it's not a token in the network sense at all it's actually the record of a share of a company and that ownership is evidence on a blockchain that's a security token i think we're the most advanced as far as having the most number of security tokens on our platform but then there's t0 that has some there's adax in europe that has some so it's a it's a buddy market and all of us are trying to actually work together to get more liquidity into this ecosystem because at the moment these pipes are amazing they can do things with liquefying private assets in a way that they haven't been done before mm -hmm. but the investor community the lp community has not adopted it yet because they're not aware of it yes. so now at the moment is a lot of education to tell people that what they're buying in a security tokens is just another share of a company uh -huh. or just another investment in a fund it's actually something that they gain more liquidity in than the traditional way but they has the only way they get more liquidity is if lots of people are interacting with the system this way so that's to come i think that that that, that is partly the true but they don't know it looks like in a, yeah. the, the traditional assets so that's, so that's along that, the that's line the thing the, the advantages of it are really economic advantages so for example if you were to invest in a private hedge fund you know, if you were to take your money out and put it in another hedge fund, there's this whole process of redemption and subscription where there's a notice period that takes 15 days. The cash takes 30 days to come from the fund. It takes 30 days to reinvest it. Mm -hmm. So now that's more than 60 days where your cash has just been sitting there doing nothing. Mm -hmm. And if it's a 20% type opportunity that you're looking at, that's more than 300 basis points in alpha. Instead of that, if, it's, if you had done it with security tokens, I could have just sold you my share and it would be done. We could do it over drinks one night and, and there was no delay whatsoever. So you can save a lot of money by doing this. So there's actually economic alpha that can come from it. Again, it's an educational thing that has to go out there and we have to tell people about it so that they'll start doing it this way. The other big one is, you know, anything private like a private equity fund, usually to get secondary liquidity before the 10 years is up is almost next to impossible. Mm -hmm. Whereas if it was tokenized, then even though it was private from the fund manager standpoint, investors could trade it amongst themselves without any involvement of the fund manager. Mm -hmm. So that's the beautiful thing. We can take a private equity fund, put it into a actual feeder fund, and then have it sold to investors as a token. And instead of being a $5 million minimum, now it could be a $50,000, $100,000 minimum. Instead of being a capital call structure that takes forever, can be fully funded day one, the fund manager can do something with the cash in between, reinvest in USDC yield products like we have, and then when the private fund manager calls the capital, it gets reinvested. So it gets rid of all the problems of a wealth manager and RIA chasing down small investors to try and get the capital call when the time comes. This is all automatically taken care of with the smart contract. That whole efficiency also saves a lot of money because mm -hmm. you're not paying the transfer agent to stamp papers. You're not mailing out stuff. It's all done and tracked on a 
public blockchain that anyone can audit. Block Explorer can find where your capital is if you're an issuer or if you're an investor. And it's just saves a lot of money. And saving money is the pure form of alpha. There's no skill involved. It's just operational efficiency. Absolutely. So it was born out of the ICO boom, mm -hmm. right? So the 2017, there was this ICO where all kinds of projects and companies raised capital by going around the regulations. Because a lot of that was groups raising capital by issuing tokens and then doing stuff just like what they did with capital raises for companies. And the Securities and Exchange Commission said that these are just securities. And of course they were. <laughs> so instead of that, we started and made it completely legal from being registered with the SEC, having a registered transfer agent, having a registered broker dealer to distribute the shares, and having a legal registered ATS with the Reg NMS, the new market securities regulation, so that people can buy and sell tokens again in a completely compliant way. So it's fully fine by the SEC to do this activity. So therefore, the regulators love it. They would rather have it done this way than any other way. So we can issue these tokens for any U.S. company or any international company. We did one for the Exodus wallet, the Reg A Plus 75 million raise. You can do it for crowdfunding raises for smaller companies, and you can do it for token projects who want to do it in like super duper proper way rather than taking the risk that they'll be sued by the SEC at some point. So the correlation between the, cap the real use for the capital markets or the function is that we're replacing the rails of finance, mm -hmm. right? If the old ways of issuing securities and trading them were on DTC and SWIFT for the dollar part, we're replacing them with Ethereum and Avalanche and USDC as a settlement mm -hmm. coin. So it's just a complete transformation of the old types of finance. Eventually, everything will be ha happen this way because it is better but people have to adopt it. So the ecosystem now will grow as more people come into there and as more funds and companies issue on this platform. Because you can't get liquidity until you have buyers and sellers. You don't have buyers and sellers until you have good product to put on the platform. That's really my remit and securitized capital mission is to get good funds on the platform and educate the investor universe to do it this way. And if you can save them fees and make it more efficient, we think that it'll attract them. And events like this and getting out there and speaking to people, we're also trying to have joint ventures with the RIA and wealth management communities. So for example, there's a digital asset conference for financial professionals, which is a conference for registered investment advisors who are already putting and want to put their clients into digital assets. So, you know, we're partnering with them to do some webinars and do some education for their clientele because these are the gatekeepers of all the family offices and wealth in the States. Okay. And so they are the ones who will then tell the investors because otherwise you cannot scale. Yeah. Like, us a few people in one company are not going to be able to scale and get the word out. But if the entire RIA community first learns and then goes out and tells all their clients and then they tell all their friends, that's how it's going to grow. Okay. Well... I think that, uh, you know, the couple of things that we're really concentrating on is one is actively managed crypto funds. Because mm -hmm. two years ago, it wasn't even possible to get a lot of good arbitrage strategies. There were like two or three forms of alpha and that's it. Now there's like 10, 20, 10 or more really good strategies, not just the futures basis, not just stat arb, not just... The DeFi products and DeFi is growing and, and there's responsible DeFi too, not just all Luna and Terra. Yeah. There's actually stuff in Aave and Compound that you can make regular yield. It's all over collateralized and it's all done on chain. So there's no opaqueness. It's all transparent. So you can do all of this. But again, for investors putting in like a million dollars, you can go and access 10 different strategies unless you had it as an actively managed fund. But if you do it as an actively managed fund, then it's kind of illiquid because you can't buy and sell it. So we take the actively managed fund, do a kind of fund to fund structure with strategies that are available now that weren't available three years ago, but tokenize it so that now people can buy and sell it and get some liquidity. So that's one of the ones that we're very excited about. Yes. The other is, you know, the fractionaliz fractionalization of private equity funds. Mm -hmm. So things that otherwise are traded in very large pieces, like 5 million, 
and trade by appointment only when there's no way to transfer them in the old way of paper and subscription and redemption. But here again, feeder funds, tokenize it, you get the same exposure, and now you can do it in smaller pieces because the private equity fund manager doesn't have to worry about the capital calls. That's done by the smart contract, <laughs> which just makes it a lot more efficient and a lot more liquid.